Okay, this is Math 2, Unit 7, Lesson 2A. Uh, basically, Lesson 2 is, is uh, broken apart into two sections. I'm not sure how your teacher ran that with you guys this week. Um, 2A is dealing with a certain kind of triangle. It's dealing with our 45-45-90 triangle. And if you recall from your lesson, the way this is set up is that if I have a 90-degree angle and my other angles are 45 degrees, then when I look at those sides, I have one value, or the value of my legs are h, and the value of the hypotenuse is h, sorry, h, x, x radical 2. And that same pattern will take place in the rest of these problems down here. So this is your key element for lesson 7.2a. Okay, so let's take a look at a few problems here. We're going to look at numbers 2, 3, 4, and 7. So on your worksheet, 4K, form k on mine at least, this is the front side. Uh, lesson B is the back side, which we'll get to in the next video. So looking at number 20, first thing I want to look at is, actually number 2, is I have my legs here and here, and I have to find the value of x. Well, because it's a 45, 90, and 45 triangle, if this is 20, then this value right here is also 20. So x is simply going to be 20 because that's what's missing over here. Looking at how this works, my value of my hypotenuse is going to be x times the root uh, 2. So my y value will be whatever x is, which is 20 root 2. And that's really all there is to it. So x equals 20 and y equals 20 root 2. When you look at number 3, now it gets a little different here. I have to think back to the kind of the equation I started with. Well, the hypotenuse is going to be x root 2. So when I look at what they gave me, they gave me the root 2, and that's still there, and x must be huh, 24. And because these sides are equal to each other, x is equal to 24, and y is equal to 24. Okay, so we're just using the same little pattern up here to figure out what's missing. Same idea. Number four is a little different, okay, because now they gave me values here of x, they gave me 16, I can tell it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, but now it went a little bit backwards. So I have to think a little differently and go, huh, how did this work? Well, if you think back to your, um, your equations before, um, we knew that x squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's set it up that way real quick. This would be x right here as well. If I set up as an a squared equals b squared, sorry, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I'd end up with an x squared plus an x squared equals 16 squared. If I set up as a, b, c in that way. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. And 16, gosh, that lovely number 16 comes up in everyone, is 256. If I divide both sides by 2, I find out that x squared equals 168. I'm not done yet because I have to get the x by itself. So the square root of 168, well, not sure what that is, but let's break it apart. 168, I can break it into half, becomes 2. Oops, sorry, 168. Why is it 168? Sorry about that. 128. I apologize. This should be 128. Let's rewrite that there. Sorry. 128. So 128 broken in half is 2 times 64. Okay. Well, now I know something or recognize something that I, I see in here. 64. If I do the square root of all this, the square root of 64 is 8, and I still have a 2 in the radical. So x is going to be equal to 8 radical 2. And that goes back to this problem here. So right here we have 8 radical 2 for what my value of x is going to be. That's how I solved it. Your teacher may show you a different way, but I kind of used what I knew about the Pythagorean theorem in order to get there to figure that out. Okay? Um, probably the way you might want to do it is, is basically multiply both sides by the radical 2 or divide both sides you end up something a little different. Well, anyways, ignore that. Let's do something different. <laughs> Let's look at number seven. Sorry. 
Uh, it says Charlene made a square quilt block by piecing together four congruent isosceles right triangles. Okay, so we're making a lovely block by putting together isosceles, four of them, right triangles. So I have four triangles put together to make a nice square block. It tells me that the diagonal of the square, so the whole diagonal, is six. What is the perimeter of the square in simplest radical form? So I need to find out what this value is going to be. And I have this one here. I have an x there, x there, x there. I have lots of x's, right? Those are all my lovely x's. So, well, because it is isosceles, these are isosceles triangles, if this whole thing is 6, that tells me that one side is 3 and the other side is 3. So all these small diagonals are 3. Because they're 3 and 3 and it's isosceles and they intersect in the middle, I have a right triangle here. My 45s are down here. And I'm left with the same kind of question I had before. I have a right triangle, I have sides of 3, and I need to find out what the hypotenuse is going to be. Well, the hypotenuse for this lovely triangle is going to be, look at our back in our original, I take x, and it's x radical 2. So my x value is 3, and add the radical 2. So that's what this value right here is going to be. Now the thing is, though, it's a square, and because it's a square, I'm going to have four of these. One, two, three, four. So if I multiply the whole thing by four, four times three is 12, and I still have radical two, and that's all there is to it. Okay? So I have four, 12 radical two, and that's it for number seven. Let's look at one more, number eight. Oh, sorry about that. I made it messy. So 12 radical 2. There we go. Number 8, last one. A square has a side of length 11 radical 2. So our length here is 11 radical 2. If you think back to the last problem, what's that tell you? Uh huh. That means if I was to draw those little diagonals again, that becomes my x radical 2. What is the length of the diagonal of the square? Well, here's the diagonal. It's like this problem, but backwards now. It wants to know what that is going to be. If I went ahead and chopped it up like this again, and I looked at it as a triangle, 45, 45, 90 triangle here, if that's the case, then my x value right here would be the 11. So I have an 11. I have an 11. And because this is a square, all these are technically 11. Oops. Which would mean that my full diagonal is 11 plus 11, which is 22. Does that make sense? So just draw a picture, see what they're asking, and find those triangles. Okay, that's it.